So now let's analyze the shear stress in the beam at a particular cross section. We will see that your shear stress is uniform across the width of a cross section and it varies only with depth. So let's analyze the shear stress in the beam. Now before we begin, let us consider the small concept of complementary shear stress. We know for beam under sagging moment, the top layer is subjected to maximum compression whereas the bottom layer is subjected to maximum tension whereas the neutral axis is subjected to zero stress and the compressive stress and tensile stress varies linearly across the section and the variation of bending stresses is as shown in the figure. So if you see the beam under bending, we have the compressive force developed on the part of cross section above the neutral axis whereas the tensile force is being developed on the part of cross section below the neutral axis and under bending for static equilibrium your total compressive force Fc is equal to total tensile force Ft. Now consider the small elemental part of the beam as shown in the green color of small elemental length delta x and let tau be the shear stress developed in the two cross sections of the small elemental part of the beam whose width is delta x. Now if you see the effect of shear stress on this part of the beam is to cause rotation of this beam as shown in the figure. Now so as to prevent this rotation of beam and to satisfy the static equilibrium equation there develops another stress which is denoted by tau dash on a horizontal plane adjacent to and parallel to this two vertical transverse plane this shear stress is called as complementary shear stress. So we can say that the shear stress on the vertical or transverse section is balanced by the complementary shear stress on a horizontal plane adjacent to the vertical cross section so that the condition of static equilibrium is attained. Now consider a section whose neutral axis and central axis is shown in the figure. Now if you want to determine the stress at point P in the cross section which is denoted by tau, the shear stress tau will remain constant over a horizontal layer passing through that point and we can determine the value of tau by considering the complementary shear stress tau dash which acts on a horizontal plane passing through that layer and whose magnitude is same as that of vertical or transverse shear stress tau. So if we show this by removing the upper part of the cross section above this plane or this layer, we see a picture is clear and we have this transverse shear stress on the transverse plane is equal to the complementary shear stress on the horizontal plane and both are of equal magnitude so as to prevent the beam from rotating. Now just like in bending, we have derived a bending formula or flexural formula. Let us derive the formula to determine the magnitude of shear stress. Now let us consider a beam whose longitudinal axis is shown in the figure. It is a horizontal beam which is subjected to vertical loadings of different kind as shown in the figure. And this is the cross section of the beam where B is the width and D is the depth. And we have shown the centroidal xx axis of the cross section which will also be its neutral axis. Now in general this beam is subjected to both shear force as well as bending moment. Now let us focus our attention on this small elemental part of the beam whose width is delta x. We show this small elemental part of beam isolated in different figure over here as shown in the figure. So we have two cross sections one shown here and other is exactly behind this. So let f be the shear force on this cross section which is not shown whereas f plus delta f be the shear force on this cross section. Similarly, let m and m plus delta m be the bending moments at the two cross sections respectively. Now let us consider a point P on this cross section which is at a distance y from the neutral axis as shown in the figure. So if you want to determine the shear stress at this point P on this vertical or transverse plane, that shear stress will be called as your transverse or vertical shear stress. We can determine it we are considering a horizontal layer which passes through the point where your shear stress will be same all along the layer. Now as we have already discussed the shear stress at this point will be equal to the complementary shear stress developed on a horizontal plane passing through that layer and the point P which is denoted by tau dash. So let us determine the shear stress tau. The figure shows the enlarged view of the cross section. We have shown a layer at which we have point P and we have to determine the transfer shear stress tau at this point. Now consider a area which is shaded in green color which is on the cross section and above the layer considered. 